Ah, okay, then I'm going to ask the colleagues in, re in make a reaction to what was said in five minutes maximum. So have, what should the order be? Two sh brief reactions, but I will need the microphone. Okay, one thing is, which is very exciting, very important in relation to climate change, this is not quite obvious, but it's there, we can sense it, that there is an anthropologi uh, anthropological sense, we are in the middle of a kind of mass extinction. If we look at the rates of extinction of species, it's 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 a large thing, and it's something that we it's unreturnable. I mean, you can't. It's irreversible. These species who are once gone, they will never return. One small part might be genetically reconstructed, or by genetic engineering, you can uh, have them come back. But that will be a very minor part. This is when uh, biology knocks the door and hello, there is a problem here. But those who don't believe in climate change, well, they should look at the, the, the changes in the habitat of the species. It's very clear. I mean, it's easy to look at it. And you have the instruments to look at this uh, nowadays. And you can see that the species are now really changing as a result of the climate change. And uh, Dan Brooks uh, shows and says that unfortunately there are new contact zones emerging and these uh, actually lead to the emergence of new diseases, the first documentation of which has been uh, done. And uh, just one idea, one remark uh, concerning quantum mechanics, which I believe is extremely important, is that it's not only the esoteric ideas and uh, like as the efficiency of photosynthetic reaction but just chemistry as such in the whole world of chemistry is unthinkable without uh, quantum mechanics that chemical bonding cannot be interpreted without quantum physics and quantum mechanics and 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 it gives an extra insight into chemistry Thank you, that's all I wanted to say. Just a couple of remarks. One is on climate change. Everybody, all of us, feel the climate change. It is happening. We go outside on the street or just uh, switch on the television. Those opposing it say that you cannot separate human activity uh, from geological processes. You also said that uh, it existed in the past, even without, uh, for example, that's what Trump says actually now, so that the issue extra emission of carbon dioxide didn't exist at the past. But uh, I think we have to find ways to separate these two more efficiently. The other remark is what Ursh uh, said also that's uh, uh, based on quantum mechanics or actually, actually there is quantum mechanics in the background for example how the way various groups cooperate and it, I know that it's tremendously simplified but just as for illustration Quantum uh, mechanics describes things, for example, the one end of the universe, there's a particle, let's say an electron, and the other end of the universe, there's another electron. If these uh, actually are uh, connected through the quantum mechanics, if something happens to one, the other sees this. And Actually, this is also mirrored, it's possible, I think, to mirror this through biology. And that may be the background to what Ursh described about the tribal group, uh, experiments. That's just another addition, just to say that you have to uh, focus on quantum uh, mechanics. About cooperation between groups. Today, there are many uh, possibilities to actually use data binding, mining methods to uh, 
map communication and behavior between groups. And in the US, actually, related to the uh, election, there was a survey, although media in the U.S. is actually uh, very colorful, there are different uh, directions and support uh, and preferences, but the preferences of a given group is almost like exclusive. They just pretend that only the media groups that they focus on exist. For example, if there would be an opposing in opinion on the other side, they refuse to even click over and, and check that out. So even in the virtual space and communication space, even without boundaries and barriers, they refusing to uh, leave their closed circles and environments. They, that's why they just stay there, they reinforce each other, and that is why these stupid ideas get reinforced, it's, uh, it's very bad, uh, although animals don't uh, have mobile phones and don't click uh, using uh, uh, these devices, but among humans, these are actually, these devices open up new possibilities, and we can uh, interpret and, and, and look at the behavior. Even, uh, I think, uh, these days science has its limits. There's a lot we, we don't know. I think whatever discipline you look at, or whatever area in science you look at, there's much more what we don't know than what we do. And also there are a lot of phenomena that we're still unable to explain at the moment uh, using the current knowledge that we have. And I think quantum mechanics is about to uh, come up with new surprises, so it's possible that these phenomena, which we cannot explain or know at the moment, can be later explained with quantum mechanics about, uh, or refer back to the honkish type bubble, because he said that uh, mankind actually creates this protective bubble, which they call uh, civilization, in order to protect themselves from the nasty outside world. Ursh probably would say that the reason to come up with this bubble is just so that they can organize a cooperation among uh, people through which they actually can establish competitive and viable societies. What I'm really curious about is how these groups of symbols uh, come about. The, 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 for example, the sets of rules, like the highway code, which everybody within a group understands and follows. How do they come about? Is it engineered? Somebody just comes up with it, uh, introduces it? I don't think so. I think that this is also a result of an evolutionary process. There are these particular ideas, which actually, according to one branch of uh, the uh, evolutionists, they are replicators, also they called memes. My question is, is it possible that behind all this, that's what we that we have? So people keep trying the various ideas, and the one that survive is actually the, the one that uh, can be very, make a, a particular group more efficient in comparison with, in competition with other groups. What are your opinions? I can bring an example. For example, there are these uh, old white tales uh, regarding weather observations. And actually, there was uh, science in itself. Uh, actually, these were, in the past, a matter of life and death, because previously, but even now, but uh, previously even more so, um, people were really prone to the effect of uh, weather and it was sometimes uh, could have proven fatal if they overlooked certain phenomena in weather. And that is why that these must have become ingrained 
in society and I think that they also uh, develop through evolution because if you didn't uh, plow your fields or sow your seeds at a particular time then you just didn't have uh, food later on like a Darwin uh, uh, award winners uh, because that's when they had unorthodox methods in farming and agriculture they died out these rules are not valid anymore until they were because of the, the, the weather and the climate was more or less predictable or stable in a classic sense of the world word. Now we see changes that these rules, for example, we can forget about. Now, for example, if you want to sow your seeds or plow your fields just like 10,000 years ago, then you will not uh, grow anything. And also, these days now we're not so at the so much at the mercy of weather compared to the past because I think previously it must have been something to do with evolution the way these habits and rules uh, were formulated and that goes same goes for other activities because farming was a necessity a very important necessity at the time and uh, other uh, activities were related to that. I have two remarks. One, let's start with an anecdote. My intellectual grandfather, J.B.S. Holden, at the time used to start his population genetics lectures saying that are two uh, sentences. I inherited my nose from my father and I inherited my watch from my father. And biologists are only interested in the former. The two words watch and nose in Hungarian only differ with one letter, an extra R. These days what we call is the niche constructions. The niche basically is the ecological system of conditions that provides a direct responsive environment for a species and we had to adapt to our environment as a biological population but for example in a beaver builds their den or castle or structure their uh, offspring also inherits this structure so, for example, if we create a bubble around ourselves, you can see episodes to that in other areas of biological evolution. Similar with uh, bacteria, biofilms, for example, that the niche that the uh, bacteria create, which then they affect uh, future generations and can have a positive feedback to the bacteria which produced it in the first place. That's one. And the other? What is really exciting in these cooperative games these days is that social norms and how they proliferate, how they spread. We have the various actions uh, that can be uh, carried out by the actors, but how, what's the basis to measure and qualify these actions as good or bad? That's so, uh, the matter of social norms and that is a cultural uh, heritage, not a genetical heritage. And basically, the genetic background and the uh, social network uh, are all interrelated. This is a very large field, but uh, it's very exciting because uh, poor chimpanzees, they cannot pass on the social norms uh, just because they cannot talk about it, basically. So the appearance of language is of primary importance uh, when it comes to social norms, obviously, because actually language is the basis of the cumulative uh, evolutionary uh, traditions. Um, thank you. Since my two colleagues were talking, but I would actually I would wanted to search and show an experiment to you. Hopefully, I can put that on the screen.
1805, a physicist called Young actually carried out an experiment that was a screen with two, uh, punched two holes and let uh, light through the holes and then behind there were uh, uh, rays, uh, so the waves, the wave inter interference was detected on the other side. But this was also carried out with atoms and same interference was the result. This experiment was done with electrons in a way that only one electron was present at a time. So there was the screen with two holes and one electron at a time was sent through these two holes. And the other side, as you can see, I don't know how I can just um, go back to the beginning. So you could see the uh, interference. So the electrons are coming, one blue dot is one electron uh, lit up and they come and slowly but surely you can see the same interference uh, system uh, with the others. So this proves that electrons cannot only form waves but also they form quantum mechanical systems and certain uh, probability for them to pass through one hole and then uh, the other and then the two interfere with uh, Inter uh, have interference in the end. This is immensely interesting because if I uh, not cover up the hole, but if I know which hole the electron passed through, then the interference uh, detected disappears. It's the same as opening the box and uh, checking whether the pack inside is alive or dead. And if after a uh, month, for example, I forget that they, I knew, that I knew, then the interference comes back. So quantum mechanics also in time and also in distance, they represent something else. So one electron is at the, on one end of the uh, universe, the other is on the other, but they're still connected. So the interference was there, I forgot about it. If I go back and revisit the whole thing in a week, the same picture is there for me. Uh, it's difficult to understand, or you can't understand, but you can get used to it. So this is what I wanted to show. The question I have is, what do you think the probability is that in fact, other intelligent life hasn't contacted us because we're like the Republicans in Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm very serious about it. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, I think an answer to this question has several layers. Uh, first of all, maybe it's an age-related phenomenon, but uh, you know, uh, in my case, uh, it's not an insult, it's Sorry, a, I'm insulting myself. So, one of my fears is actually the origin of life, right? So, um, uh, as I am growing older and older, I think that uh, the origin of life from the chemical mayhem from which it starts uh, is not a very probable process. Uh, that is what I think, okay? So, the prediction is that if you have in principle, habitable planets, you know, a thousand of them. Elfben, I mean, it's very likely, in my view, that only one of them, not even one of them, a fraction of them, uh, developed a primitive life. Now, this is something that is testable in the near future, because we will be able to analyze the atmosphere content of the exoplanets. Detect that the atmosphere is out of thermodynamic equilibrium on a planet. Then this gives us a very good hint, not a proof, but a very good hint. If something like a biological process has been taking place there, we will know in twenty years how the situation will be. My expectation is, and I can be proved, I will be happy to be. Én nagyon örök, örülnék, hogyha ezt tudnánk igazolni, de azt gondolom, hogy nem fogunk semmi érdekeset találni. Legalábbis ez az én predikciom.
Uh, not necessarily, but we might be well uh, uh, well alone in the in, the, in our galaxy. The second, sorry, the second a thing is that of course once you have one, primitive life, even that's not a guarantee for us, because if you look at your history, you know, half of the time of all evolution was dominated by bacteria, right? which half is very very close to one. So again, uh, the second uh, uh, theorem or whatever is that given the fact that there is life elsewhere, that van, meg valahol élet, akkor az eseteknek a 99%-ban van valami baktérium szintű élettel találkozhatunk, és az intellektuális, intelligens élet azért nagyon ritka lehet valószínűleg. Nem, nem valószínű. Azért a válaszom nem egy elméleti, hanem inkább egy, tud, egy filozófiai jellegű. A tudományban lehet kísérletet bizonyítani dolgokat. Az elméleti részek nagyon sokféle egyetemességet tudnak bizonyítani. Annyi Ö, galaxist, amennyit csak akarnak, de hogy egy pont ilyet, amíg tulajdonképpen nem bizonyítjuk tételesen, addig csak filozófia marad, nem pedig ö, tudomány. Something in relation to Mr. Professor Crow's presentation. István Bibó in the 1930s, when he wrote his uh, dissertation on um, the law, uh, science, legal science. He said that in natural sciences there are some cause and effect things, and in, in social sciences there are other determinations. Somebody in a footnote mentions quantum mechanics, and then he talks about the consequences of probability, and he says this might be the case, but it doesn't have anything to do with cause and effect. He could see the problem, but he said, well, we have nothing to do with it. Yeah, let's just suppose that this causation principle is still there, with not affected. Now, as we are still analyzing things with a cause and effect, kind of using cause, 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 causation and reasoning, uh, we cannot accept quantum mechanism in our analyses. Both Newton and Montesquieu say, for the God to be able to govern the world, we need rules and regulations. Even God would not be able to govern the, the world without rules. And Einstein said the same, that probability is not a rule. You cannot accept something which is based on probability. But I think it's possible, yes, to, to have both, either God or the rules, or if we take what if we believe the world as a basic contingent, then well, I think the intervention of God is there to believe for us. Not every phenomenon, phenomenon has a quantum mechanical explanation that seems to have one here. There were some psychological experiments where probability was analyzed based on the analysis. It seems that there are some quantum mechanical um, processes or at least some processes reminding us of quantum uh, mechanics. Uh, other models can produce systems or results as if they were a quantum mechanical phenomenon or phenomena, but they can be modeled without quantum mechanics. So we, we shouldn't jump to uh, conclusion that everything is laid, laden with quantum mechanics. God is always mentioned when there is a kind of a gap or a void or something inexplicable. We shouldn't do the same with quantum mechanism because that will lead to a big mess, really. Thank you for the contributions.